that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as an actor. Star Wars, Black Hawk Down, Moulin Rouge. Ewan McGregor has enjoyed roles in some of the biggest films to hit the silver screen in the past decade. So it's not surprising to learn that he probably has had one of the fastest rises to success in Hollywood history. As Scottish and proud as his name suggests, Ewan McGregor was an underwhelming student and his parents, both teachers themselves, who knew a lot about troubled high school teens, let him leave high school for drama school and stagehand work at the local rep theatre. A move to London and more drama school kept Ewan out of trouble, and soon he was auditioning for anything that would come along. Controversially and in true Ewan style, he left drama school six months before graduating to take a role in his first major production, a six-part miniseries called Lipstick on Your Collar. More TV and brief film work followed, and he forged a beneficial partnership with Danny Boyle when he starred in Shallow Grave, as it was Boyle who was to give Ewan his breakout role soon thereafter in Trainspotting. McGregor was superb as the charming junkie Renton and was so meticulous with his research, he even considered experimenting with heroin, but in the end didn't, as he felt it would be disrespectful to the real life addicts he'd spoken to. Well, it's funny, we had two weeks rehearsal and we learned a lot about drugs and we worked with the Carton Athletic boys in Glasgow, ex-junkies ex who, uh, who played football with them and, and one of the men came in to show us how to cook up heroin and stuff, and cookery classes with them and stuff. And after the two weeks, it was like heroin was just... wasn't a big deal anymore, you know. A mere two years after turning professional, Ewan McGregor had arrived. Trainspotting was a huge hit with critics and audiences, earning an Oscar nomination and several BAFTAs. Its Britpop-centric soundtrack also made the film, and Ewan part of the cool Britannia scene of the 90s. Building on his success, Ewan landed more high-profile feature roles, including a role opposite Gwyneth Paltrow in Emma. Then he starred in the erotic drama The Pillow Book, which required Ewan to spend most of the time in the bath. Then he was back to the UK for the charming comedy Brassed Off, where his director noted Ewan's potential. I think Ewan is one of the best young actors in, in Britain at the moment. And uh, he's just special. He's, he's a real film film star, as you know, opposed to just a sort of stage and TV. He's, he, he knows what it takes to, to be well on the, on the screen. He's brilliant in his face. Minute things. Ewan continued to mix things up, taking a role in ER, which would earn him an Emmy nomination, and he re-teamed up again with Danny Boyle for a life less ordinary opposite Cameron Diaz. And then he famously offered up full frontal nudity again, playing an Iggy Pop style glam rock muso in Velvet Goldmine. In contrast, he took an uncharacteristic but well played role in Little Voice, where he played a painfully shy telephone installer. Then came the big one. Ewan made headlines around the world when he landed the coveted role of the youthful Obi-Wan Kenobi in the highly anticipated Star Wars prequels. The first film, The Phantom Menace, was a colossal artistic disappointment and lacked the fairy tale feel of its predecessors, the whole reason why Ewan was attracted to the project in the first place. Despite this, it was box office gold and turned Ewan into a bona fide movie star. Always comfortable speaking his mind, Ewan courted controversy when he admitted he had found the filmmaking process of The Phantom Menace the epitome of tedium, and realised his new place on the Hollywood ladder when Fox execs asked him, in no uncertain terms, to clarify his position. He got to stretch his acting chops when he took a role in Baz Luhrmann's flamboyant musical Moulin Rouge, where he did all his own singing, and then, despite having decried the box office blockbuster in some interviews for The Phantom Menace, was back with the big guns in Ridley Scott's Black Hawk Down. But this time, Ewan saw the noble side of shooting a film of this real-life event. So what we're doing on screen is what, the, is what would have been done. So it's, it's accurate, and that's important, I think. It's very important for the Rangers. It's very important for the people who were there that are going to watch the film. It's very important for the people who lost their, their sons and daughters or lovers or whatever there. 
that, that we're doing things right. Ewan reprised his role of Obi-Wan Kenobi again for the lackluster Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones. And then he closed his year with an experience he thoroughly enjoyed, working with Tim Burton in the larger-than-life Big Fish. He plays Ed Bloom, a younger Albert Finney who embellishes stories of his life that are shown in flashbacks. I was sitting talking to my wee girl and I said, Clara, I've had the most incredible day. I said, I've just, I won a baseball game, I won a football game, I won a basketball game, and everyone loved me and they cheered and I feel fantastic. <laughs> that was really great. It's a good day for your ego. Everyone should have one. I think once a year, instead of birthdays, we should have a kind of Edward Bloom day, you know, where you get to feel great. Ewan was happy to be back where he was comfortable, working in a collaborative environment with a masterful storyteller. I think that that's what it is we do. That's what I like, to, that we tell stories, you know. And, uh, and, and having children, I now realise that I like to tell my children stories as much as I like to hear them when I was a child, and I still like to hear a good story. All the while, of course, there was Star Wars. When doing press for the third and final instalment, Revenge of the Sith, Ewan candidly admitted that the pressures of his sudden mega fame and the publicity treadmill had led him towards alcoholism. The financial disaster that was Michael Bay's The Island didn't help matters either, with the studios claiming that neither Ewan nor co-star Scarlett Johansson were big enough stars to carry such a monster film. He took some time out, riding a motorbike from London to New York via Alaska, which he turned into a doco series, The Long Way Round. And, now a father of three daughters himself, gave all the proceeds to the Children's Hospice Association of Scotland. Ewan was revitalised and took on smaller roles in bigger films, as opposed to having the pressure of carrying the entire film himself. He starred in the huge Dan Brown adaptation, Angels and Demons, and then totally rediscovered his love for acting when he took a role in the comedy The Men Who Stare at Goats. It's a very exciting group, George and Kevin Spacey and Jeff Bridges. It's a lovely, it's an amazing cast and, and um, it's such a, it's, it's very, everyone's so very, very different, you know, as, as all actors are. And Jeff's incredibly uh, meticulous and into detail and, uh, and you really, and then you really get to play with him when the camera's turning, there's real, sense of play and it's great fun, it's really great fun. So what was it that attracted you into the project in the first place? That's right, it was the salt and pepper heartthrob, George Clooney. Don't worry, Ewan, we understand. The first thing I, I was told about it was that, you know, it was George Clooney and that um, I've wanted to work with George for a long, long time. So it was, you know, that happens every now and again, you get a script through where it's someone you really want to work with that's attached to it, and so that was very exciting. Still determined to seek out satisfying projects as opposed to huge Hollywood paydays, Ewan signed on for The Ghost Writer and the opportunity to work with filmmaking legend Roman Polanski. He's one of the few great, great filmmakers alive, you know? And um, for an actor to get an opportunity to work with him is extraordinary, and to um, and the, the what you get out of working with him is also quite extraordinary. I think we're, we're fascinated by him because he really is a filmmaker with a vision and we recognise that and we want that. And he had something of a bromance going on with co-star and former 007, Pierce Brosnan. I love this cast. The cast is really special and everyone's very human and real and there's no egos or shouting and Ewan is, you know, leading the way so he's a top man in my book. He's someone who I've always admired as an actor. And he brings such a vulnerability and charm. And, you know, you can see into his face. He has a face that just uh, shines. And he's very funny, too. He catches the irony really well. In The Touching Beginners, Ewan plays a man coming to terms with his father's revelation of homosexuality upon the death of his mother, the real life story of beginner's director, Michael Mills. This film has it all, love, loss, and a cute little co-star called Cosmo. They asked about Cosmo and I said, well, I was talking about working with Cosmo. And I said, and, uh, you know, in a week's time, I'll have to say goodbye to him. And I started to cry in front of the camera. It was rather embarrassing, but I was really upset. And um, I got very close to having to him and having him around. And I grew up with dogs and I never had a dog since I, I left home when I was 16. So. Um, 
my wife came to visit and she's allergic to dogs, my wife, but she saw me with Cosmo and she realized that, that there was something missing for me, you know? So she, she said, look, we should, you should if, you, if you can find one that I'm not allergic to. And then, so on the very last day of the shoot, the very last day of the shoot, I was, uh, before I left the house, I was looking on the internet and I found this little dog, a little poodle mix dog that was in a rescue centre near me where I live. And um, I went, and, and he's now my dog, he's called Sid. And he's the same, almost the same size as Cosmo. And he's white, he's the same colour. And he's totally a little Cosmo replacement, you know. So, so due to Mike and this film, I ended up finding Sid as well, which is nice. Ewan had the tough job of falling in love with French actress Melanie Laurent. So how did they realistically recreate the unpredictable giddiness of falling in love? Well, she's, she's extraordinary, Melanie. She's a real life force, you know, and she comes in and uh, I never met her before, but right all the way through rehearsals. And we start, I think the first thing we did was go to um, a roller coaster park and uh, and go on roller coasters. And I, I'm not really, I don't really like roller coasters. I'm a bit frightened of them, to be honest. Um, it's something I used to probably like when I was younger. But uh, Mike had this idea that like falling in love with someone is like being on a roller coaster where you start somewhat out of, you're totally out of control on it and it's a bit scary and exhilarating and it can make you feel a bit sick. So um, he thought that that was quite similar to falling in love. And he was smitten with co-star and on-screen dad, Christopher Plummer, who ended up winning his first Academy Award at age 82. The director's unconventional way of getting his co-stars to bond seemed to have worked, yeah? He sent us off to a shop to buy, he sent us off to Barney's in, in LA to buy, to buy Christopher a scarf. And so he sent me and, and um, Christopher off on our own. On the first day we met each other and we wandered around and. I helped Christopher find a scarf, although he was mainly just interested in finding a pair of skinny black jeans, which is what he got set his mind on. And um, that helped us to kind of, uh, to ha have a flavor of that relationship between a, an older man and, and uh, a younger man who's looking after him, I suppose. A father and a son to an extent. Ewan has kept busy, mixing up his roles from smaller, more arty films like Salmon Fishing in the Yemen, to Steven Soderbergh's action hit, Haywire, more than holding his own opposite men of the moment, Channing Tatum and Michael Fassbender. Ewan McGregor's honesty when it comes to what he believes in, his knack for sniffing out a great role, and his ability to bounce back after Hollywood disappointment has endeared him to millions all over the world. We are sure to see more cracking roles to come from him in the future, possibly a little bit more nudity and definitely some motorbike riding as well as more charity checks because that's who he is, a nice guy. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and mnc.tv.